So what's up, everyone? Welcome to the business breakthrough. I got Chris Petty here uh, with Strategic Paint, and we're uh, we're ready to rock, man. So Chris uh, went to the PCI Expo last year, heard a little bit about me, um, and I'm here to listen to you, man. Tell me a little bit about you know what you've built so far. I saw the notes kind of hit some decent revenue. Um, tell me a little bit about what's been going on in the business, man. And at the end of it, tell me an area that you're wanting to focus on today. Yeah, Tanner, thanks for having me. Um, I think we actually may have met at the PCA Expo uh, a year back and um, super excited. We were able to just jump Were you in call. Orlando? Did you come to Orlando? Albuquerque. I wasn't in Albuquerque. Okay, gotcha. I was, so I was in the one previous and I'll be at this one. Are you coming to the one this year? Absolutely. Orlando? Wouldn't miss it. Yeah. And um, a little bit about myself. I'm 28 years old and here in Athens, Georgia. Okay. Started the painting business two and a half years ago and uh, the other part of the state and started doing some real estate investing. I was like, man, I, I, I'm tired of dealing with contractors. I'm tired of dealing with a bunch of shady guys. And so I was like, I'm going to become one so I can service my portfolio and then come into the option of growing another business. And sure enough, it, it took off. I got lucky with the first guys, found a Sherwin-Williams rep that was nice to me and handed me off a good crew to start with. That crew's still with me today. Uh, they're started as subcontractors and now they're preferred subcontractors. So they really only work for me and I promise to keep them busy every day. Love that. So then I decided to get married and moved over to the other part of the state and I kept that business open, running it from three hours away with just a year into it. You're insane. Insane. They're painting business three hours away. Who would have thought wow. that's the that's not easy you can do? Well, so I started a second one called Strategic, and that's here in Athens, and okay. started that one a year ago. So now do the companies have two different names. They do Handy Pro Painting and Flooring is out of Calhoun, okay. Georgia. Okay, gotcha. So it operates on its own, and then Strategic Painting and Contracting is here in Athens. So Handy Pro is two years old, Strategic's a year old, and yep. Both of them semi run on their own without too much effort of me in a maintaining stage. And now I'm at a stage where I want to grow, just hired a salesperson, obviously just got landed with drip jobs. And so we're, we're more streamlining everything um, with the intent to sell the business within three to five years. So that's kind of where I'm at now. We're doing each business is doing right around 350,000 uh, in revenue and we are somewhat profitable with the handy pro because it's been open a little bit but strategic we're not profitable this year because we're throwing everything back into the business and just doing a ton of long-term marketing and would love to um, kind of hear what advice that you have for somebody that's sure. in my stage yeah. well i mean this is super cool because i love your mindset man you already know like hey you have the end game in mind you know, it's like when they make movies, they always got to have like the ending in mind and you work backwards from there. You're looking to sell this thing, man. Capitalize. I love it. So that's cool because you already we've knocked that portion out of the way of like, you know, what building a business is like. So I love that, man. Second thing is, I'm just going to kind of guess here. So um, Handy Pro being uh, three, three hours away is essentially one crew, right? Of three, right? Right. right? And Correct. they're they're achieving anywhere between six to seven thousand in revenue a week. Absolutely, one to two jobs, depending. Yeah, so Handy okay. Pro is structured and to where I would only go after reoccurring clients in that. Got it. So I have a couple questions about that though. Yeah, so you have reoccurring clients, so really it's kind of like you're doing turns, you're doing um, flips, you're doing. So you're not really working direct to consumer, or are you? So we do both. So our major clients, Open Door Capital, and then we have, of course, property management. Okay. And that provides the guys work every day. It's not the most profitable. Right. Um, and then I have ads that run on Google, Facebook. How are you doing the estimates? All by square foot, all by pictures. Virtual. Virtual. And yeah. so, and, and to this point, until drip jobs, it was coming through a text. Got and it. I would, I'd say... You know, I'd have an auto or a, a copy and paste text that I would send every person. And if they didn't respond with the information I needed in the photos, then I would, it was not worth my time. To yeah. Did you that. sign up for two jobs accounts? Just one. Okay. 
suggestion because we have a branch feature you can combine the accounts because they run vastly different. I assume you're doing in-person estimates with strategic. Correct. Strategic's okay. more, more model like you can kind of build out the pipeline for, you know, Handy Pro in a way that it lets them know we need photos, we need information versus strategic. It's hey, we want to come see you, you know. Type of thing. So oh, that, just, that sounds just, awesome. Yeah, just keep that in mind because they are two different businesses, really. I mean, it's the way you're running them, you know, it, the one that you're going to scale is probably strategic because you're wearing right. the branding. That's the one. That's the that's the home run. Part of you has the loyalty aspect of the people that helped you get started three hours away. And also the revenue is decent. But you said that the strategic uh, isn't as profitable. If you don't mind me asking, I mean, the handy pro, I'm, it sounds like the margins would probably be a lot less, though, because a, a preferred sub crew keeping them motivated what is the margin, the gross margin on your profit generally uh, for Handy Pro? Yeah, out the door after everything is looking at around forty five thousand, and so we're not. What percent is that? If you do three fifty, it looks if it's three fifty. Um, I, don't, I stopped doing math on the fly on this on this show, man. I always mess 12, up. 12.8 percent is, is that net or net? Gross? Net. Oh, that's net. Okay, that's after that's everything, that's pretty good. Are you providing the paint too, or are they purchasing the paint? And so I do it a couple different ways. Depends on what type of job we're doing. Because it's far enough for me, and I I want it to be more as most passive. Most of the jobs are, I give them a sixty percent of the entire job that I quote, and they okay. fulfill for everything. They figure it out. They just <laughs> like get, it out. get it all. Got it. Okay. And then um, they let me know if I'm doing a bad job at quoting, they'll let me know, hey, Chris, yeah. I'm not making any money. And you money. know these guys. Hey, man, that's so – I bet you wish you could bring them to you here. Uh, and I, free, uh, you know, might even be worth have, moving them here. Yeah, they didn't have kids <laughs> in school. I'd move them. And, and I, they are the best crew that I've ever – And Yeah, I've yeah. Good for you for keeping them. keeping them busy. And and I would probably do the same thing if it's if it's autopilot, right? So tell yeah. me about – you know, let's keep that aside. Tell me about strategic. Who are, who are the team members? What is – what, what you know? What tell me a little bit about this side of things? So we have three crews that we are preferred. Of, so you have three crews that you rotate here. Of two, strategic. are they teams of two, teams of three? Uh, I have one team of two, one team of three, and one team of four. The team of two and the team of three, I'm motivated to keep busy every single day. The team okay. of four is more of a sub, and they like get, if I need you, I'll call you. Correct. Okay. What's it? Why? You could just tell that the the is it the standard or is it kind of like the loyalty? Because probably you're comparing them to the team you got up there three hours away. Is that generally yeah, speaking? The team of four, I mean, it's just I was listening to Slavic's show yesterday and he was like, um, well, they were it's best to have two person painters. And yeah, in cases three may make the most sense, but I think he was saying along the lines that. Two person painters is ideal for how his business runs. And then he yeah. even does one person paint crews. Yeah. And so that's why I favor the two and the three group. And then because the four could be something when we have monster jobs that are time sensitive. Yeah. And I may have to bring in, you know, the more yeah. work. Yeah. So but, it's funny. Yeah. I mean, I found my sweet spots three. Uh, but four, you know, is definitely awesome when you have a big exterior and you want to bust it out, um, you know. So, yeah. OK, cool. So you got a two or three and a four. Let's talk about lead flow, man. So, um, you know, you're telling me that these businesses, even though you have two sub crews here and you have one sub crew there, generally the sales are about the same. But granted, you're just getting established here. You don't have the real estate network that you had prior or your commercial accounts so is this a mostly residential business the strategic painting right now we're 70 percent residential 30 percent commercial and we're looking to flip those two numbers so i just brought on the sales guy four weeks ago his sole job is commercial repaint door knocking so that's what yeah. he's hired as that is his job and then sending the estimates and so right. he he wakes up in the morning and knows he's going to be knocking 50 plus doors Okay, uh, and we've already okay. seen you know crazy results just from that, really? and already gotten quotes sent off to like Howard Johnson Hotel, some churches, a uh, couple. We've gotten some pretty high priority meetings with you know government officials, and so 
I've found so far that if you hire in somebody and they know they're door knocking from day one, you're going to see a lot greater results than hiring a sales guy and then trying to make that sales guy do, do some door knocking. hundred percent. You just set the, well, it's setting expectations. <laughs> like, look, right. you know, you don't have to know, you know, that's, that's really cool. Um, so tell me, man, I mean, you know, big picture wise, what's an area that you're looking for, maybe some clarity on, um, you know, now that I kind of understand, you know, what you got going on, um, how can I help you? Yeah, I would love to hear if you, could go into any other industry besides painting say just painting disappeared tomorrow and you've taken all the knowledge that you've learned and you're going to have to invest it into a brand new business what business would that be epoxy epoxy 100 percent. what's that epoxy floor yeah 100 why, why do you say that it's, it's scalable it's it's the square footage of a freaking floor i mean it's the easiest business in the world i mean in terms of scalability, it's, you could scale it so fast, you know, right. you don't have the variables of room dimensions. And I mean, you think about it, like with house painting, we have substrates, popcorn ceiling, knockdown, you have orange peel, you have obviously all the different substrates. Then you have different sizes of baseboards. You have, I mean, my team just sent me a picture of this ceiling that uh, has coffered beams on it that they have to cover in order to spray the popcorn in between the squares. Like, and it's like, <laughs> like, you know, like you, you, when you bid, like, yeah, you can think about that. Like, but we do so many estimates that I freaking missed it. You know I mean? I have no problem admitting that. And it's like, damn, like that's just a variable that like happens sometimes, you know? So for me, um, if all I had to deal with was a square piece of concrete and I can reset the substrate every single time by grinding it and having a fresh surface with no surprises, I mean, it's, it's a cake, it's a cake business. And I've seen people scale them like crazy, uh, simply because you need one crew, you do five jobs a week with two people doing the same amount of revenue as, uh, a team of four or five in the same week, you maybe even more. Um, I'd like systemized things, man. Pa house painting is very difficult to systemize unless you're disciplined in, uh, in niching down in who you service. Like for you, super hard to scale this because you have uh, a, such a counterbalance of the type of jobs you take. Like you and I know that a residential experience is different than a commercial experience, right? The commercial experience, they need three bids, especially, and you gave me three different sectors. You gave me government, you gave me church and you gave me, you know, uh, business, right? So all three of those have different processes. The church needs to go to the treasurer. The government needs to go to like the higher up and the business needs to get three bids before they can. And then they sit down around the board and discuss like, you know, so like those are all different processes. So for me, when you compare that to the residential process, using sales skills and persuasion gives you an edge versus sales skills and persuasion doesn't work in the commercial sector. So like, like it, that's what I mean in terms of like scalability. That's what I look for. So for me, it would be residential garage floors. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. As you can tell, I've thought about this before. I can tell. Why haven't you made the jump? Well, I did epoxy for a little bit and uh, I hate it. So, but you said if painting was gone, yeah. <laughs> so I had to pick, but I hate, I hate the process. I, I hate the, uh, you know, um, there is, you know, the, the element of um, just understand the chemistry behind the whole thing. And, you know, for me, man, it's just not my cup of tea. I like the cookie cutter, three bedroom, two house, two bathroom stucco houses, man. That's where we thrive. That's it. You That's know? it. Well, I love it. I love it. Um, what other softwares go good with drip jobs? If I want, is there a job costing software out there that get, that mixes as well? Or if I, yeah. I just signed up, you know, I think I'm going to hit company cam. I have yeah. books. What's kind of my next so the core? So the core of drip jobs really, I mean, our vision is to make it an all in one. So job costing is the biggest feature we're about to release. That'll probably be out end of January. Um, that's that's huge. I mean, that's a critical component of business. So we're we have that in our scope and it's it's being worked on now. Um, company Cam's fantastic. I love Company Cam. I think it's one of the coolest uh, tools out there, especially because we live in a picture economy, man. And it saved my butt a few times on having good documented pictures of things that weren't our fault. 
Um, and that's an SOP that like our guys need to take pictures. They take progress pictures. We reuse those pictures for marketing. Um, we put them in the proposal. So when you build a proposal in drip jobs, you can integrate company cam that puts all the photos in the proposal. If you annotate those photos, it clearly shows to the customer at, rather than you having to type it up. Then those same photos get converted to the work order. So you're not having to tell your team, Hey, don't forget to put paper around those coffered freaking ceilings. We have an arrow there or we should have <laughs> has, uh, that tells them to do it. So yeah, man. I mean, company cams, a, a, a killer addition. Um, another, another good thing, you know, of course is lead generation, you know, and I want to know that actually, like what has been your residential lead generation strategy for strategic painting? So there's Google ads, Facebook ads, and then Thumbtack. We got in early on Thumbtack. So we're a top provider there. Um, but my leading one is actually the amount of groups that I'm in. Uh, so I'm in Piedmont Group, BNI, Chamber of Commerce. And I'm every single week, that's my priority as the owner is to be at those meetings, talking with 50 other business owners. And that's where a lot of the leads come from that are worthwhile sure. that I'm not having to compete against four other painters because somebody well, knows me, they'll yeah. take the first quote and not get another quote and hire me on the spot. So here's what I'm seeing top down. I just can, and this is all I can give you is my advice here. Okay. You're at, and really what I, what I, what I think is missing here, if you don't mind me mentioning this, maybe it's a blind spot for you is the fact that splitting up your business between residential and commercial to me is a massive mistake because it deviates your focus because residential requires a certain level of focus, marketing, intent, sales process, presentation, all that. Commercial doesn't. We talked a little bit about that. But what you showed me is you have three crews. You have a two, a three, and a four. I have three crews. We hit $1.5 million this year in sales. Okay. With that said, that's simply from linear focus on residential repaints. Now, that's maximizing those three crews. Now, whether you do that in commercial or whether you do that in residential, we're both going to arrive at the same number. But I might be able to do it quicker and with less resources than you simply because I just focus on one thing. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. So if you get to a million and then you want to pivot to commercial, that's a good plan because you kind of bottom out, right? You're kind of like, okay, like we've hit capacity and you'll feel that. I still think there's room for me to go 2 million with maybe one more crew and that's optimized, right? But again, doing it so early on at 350 for the year, to me, you're kind of heading in a really great direction and then you're turning back around. And it's like this business requires consistent consistency, momentum, and truly understanding the customer's journey at least on the residential side. Now, if you want to go all in on commercial, heck, you probably will get there quicker because the job sizes are bigger. We know that the cash flow isn't the same. We know that the job times are longer. The experience factor of the employee morale is probably going to be lower because they're working in empty environments, you know, that sort of thing. And these are things that I value. I love the culture aspect. I love the customer bringing my guys coffee and donuts in the morning and buying them lunch and pampering my team, you know, like that's a benefit of residential work. I truly believe that the residential market is still wide open for people like you that are hungry, that are motivated, that know the game, that can talk to people, that know the sales process, that are always learning, that are innovating, that have a great team. Because right now, what you possess are the production pieces to get to 1.5 million. I'm just being honest. When you yeah. hand the keys to somebody from a sale perspective, Think about what they're going to need to do to create the results that you just that you're trying to create. You're saying that your number one lead strategy is you is what you told me. That's a problem. Would you agree? A hundred percent. Okay, because the problem is is that they're going to say, okay, what's your number one lead strategy? We'll say, oh, I'm a networker. I'm in BNI. I'm in Piedmont Group. I'm in all these different groups. We're going to say, okay, well, 
when I buy this company, do you come with it? <laughs> because you, the, the relationships were built based off of Chris's personality, Chris's, you know, and that's good for being scrappy in the beginning, which you've done and you got it up to a certain point. Quick move would be get someone else in there, <laughs> you know, yeah. and see if that can be replicated. And I know that's going to be hard because you rely heavy on that. So if that's not an option, you need something passive over here where you put money in and get results out. And you know that that's Thumbtack. That's your Facebook. That's your Google. Who's running your Facebook? I just hired a company that's a startup in Chattanooga as of three weeks ago as well. So they're in the process of getting um, they just redid Handy Pro's website, doing some SEO, and then they're going to take over social media and Facebook. Okay. Can we break break down what that looks like? Would you mind? Yeah, for sure. I can maybe audit that from my experience because I've dealt with a lot of different Facebook guys. First red flag that I hear, okay? Just maybe something that you might not have caught is that you said that they're going to be doing SEO and Facebook. That's a double. That's a double. That's trouble. That means that's I, like a guy trying to know commercial and residential painting. Come on, Chris. Time. I like you, man. You get it, right? That's double trouble. That's and it. For me, I want to work with specialists. That's like going to your dentist and him saying, hey, by the way, I can fix your gastro issues as well. You'd be like, bro, what do you mean? You're not, I don't want you touching, touching me. You stick to the teeth. That's what yeah. you went to school for. That's what you focus on every day. That's what you specialize in. That's somebody trying to make a quick buck. Okay. And what's going to happen is, is that, you only have a certain amount of energy to deal with individuals who promise results. And what's going to happen is you're going to be strung along and they're going to tell you it takes time. And really they're just buying time because they're trying to see if the results come because no one really knows. So when you are early on in a business, you got to maximize your resources. You got to pick specialists because you only have, you, you want the best results. You want someone that says, yeah, we only do Facebook, man. We don't play around with anything else because that's all we focus on. Yeah. Right? If you don't mind me asking, what are they charging you per month? Seven fifty for two companies, and here's their deliverables. Um, so their startup fee is seven fifty total. And that comes with one website build, five service pages per month on the website, um, open phone automations, create your uh door hanger designs, Google My Business Management three citations per month, three high quality backlinks per month, press releases. These would be billed separately, monthly analytics on your site, um, three posts on GMB, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, one blog post per per week with keywords to drive local traffic, um, manage your Google LSA and Google ads, one-on-one -on -one call monthly. I don't hear anything about Facebook ads. Three posts per week across Facebook. And okay. then that and includes if I decide, you know, if I'm boosting or. Okay. So let's week. be clear with what you got here. Okay. Um, it, you know, at face value, hey, that's a lot of stuff to you and I. I don't know what half of that stuff means. Right. It's just fluff. It's okay. You're going to do press releases and all this baloney. Bro, let me tell you. When you are searching for a painting company, you don't care about what's on their website. You just care about how quickly you can call them based on the reviews. Would you agree? Agree. Okay. So all that fluff means nothing to me. Okay. What matters is, is how are you going to get me in front of people? Right? So that's your LSA, which is good. Local service ads. So we need to identify what's the budget per month on the ads. So did they clearly outline what your expe expected budget is? That's a problem because what they need to be doing is running Google ads for you. And if they're, if they're doing that, they should have outlined with you what the budget should be. Gotcha. So local service ads, what, what do you kind of see your cost per lead there? Well, it really comes down to how, well, there's a couple different things for me. It's a, a good lead in, in, in painting is anywhere between 50 and a hundred dollars a lead. Yeah. yeah. Any, anything, anything around, anything lower than that is really good. To be honest with you, Google's a little harder to track. Okay. Facebook, easy to track because it's based on, because everything happens within Facebook. Google's a little bit trickier. Why? Because they call you. 
Yeah. It's a little bit harder to track. But generally speaking, my ad spend on Google ads is anywhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars a month. Gotcha. Right. So, and I pay a company base code marketing, my guy Austin, they handle all that for me. And they're phenomenal because that's what they specialize in. Right? I think I met him in Albuquerque too. Outstanding. Okay. Best team, best results. He's he's amazing, right? That's and this fair. is what they specialize in, right? Here's the deal. To be honest with you, I would get out of this agreement. I know that might be tough, but I get out of it. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I get out of it. It, it it's, doesn't it's sound not, like it's month, month. It's month to it's month. So, month. Yeah. Get out. Get out now and, and hire some some killers that know what they're doing. They do this every day. We don't have you're a startup hiring a startup. Yeah. <laughs> nah, we can't do that because you're already established in a way. You're not just starting your business. You're like, you need you need to get from level one to level two. You've already found success. Now you have to reverse engineer it and systemize what you did so you could package it up and hand it to somebody. And you don't have time to wait for this startup to get their feet under them. It ain't, it's crunch time right now to get from 350 to 700 is probably the hardest jump you're going to do. It's like with kids, when you go from one to two, it'll, it'll whoop you. Right. Yeah. If you, do you have two or one? One. You got one. Okay. So I had my second. Okay. It whooped me, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it whooped me. So that's what it is. It's that jump from, from that 350 to 700 with that one location. Now here's the deal. Let's talk Facebook ads. Cause that was the one thing I was listening for. I'm like, man, for 750, they're going to manage Facebook ads. Boosting posts is Facebook's way of making easy money on people who don't know what they're doing, including me. Right. I'm not an expert at this, but they know that if you hit that boost button, they can charge you. Smart on their part. You that's need right. you need somebody on the back end that's creating custom audiences based on different uh, different attributes and targeting the exact ideal customer that you want to see your ads, not just a radius of people, right? Yeah. We want that ad to follow people. And you want someone coaching you through that. You want someone building out your creatives, coaching you on what you need to put out. And you should expect to spend anywhere between $3,000 and four thousand dollars a month, and that includes your ad spend on someone that knows what they're doing, with the sole result and purpose delivered to you of generating you leads to get that ROI back almost immediately. So, what's the average Facebook lead cost your company? Fifty, 50 to seventy dollars. Fifty to seventy. Fifty to seventy I, per lead. Yeah, I, I would say my leads range from fifty to about one one hundred too. So. And the goal of the individual that works with you is two things. Number one, to make sure not everyone is a lead, right? They want the messaging to be right. <clears throat> they want the targeting to be right. They the, the goal of somebody managing this is to manage your money. They're like financial advisors for ad spend and they position the money in the right way. And they check on your ads to make sure that they're not fading out or one ad is, is so expensive because it's not converting. They're, they're testing ads. Right. When you have a really cool looking post, it might look cool to you, but it ain't about what you think. It's about what the market thinks and if it's appealing and if it's engaging and if it creates curiosity and if it gets people to comment and Facebook rewards that stuff. I'm talking about people that know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Most people who do that fall into a $750 plan. It makes sense. Again, I'm not an expert at this stuff. I just have learned that the marketing drives your business. The marketing, if you get us, let me ask you this. If in your BNI groups and all of your groups, you generated, let's say a hundred leads. Okay. We're valuing leads. You and I at a hundred dollars per lead, right? So $10,000 is your ad spend of the marketing groups, right? But what about your time spend? Yeah. A lot more than $10,000. <laughs> what could you be doing with your time? For I sure. got out of those groups simply because of that, because I realized I could get more leads and better results and I don't have to go out to lunch with people and go bowling. Right. And I could get my leads through channels that otherwise 15, 20 years ago when BNI was created, they didn't have that option. So networking, networking was all they did, but we got to get with the times I can reach 
10,000 10, people today on Facebook with an ad and spend my time making, making videos, doing walkthroughs, getting reviews, encouraging my team, building my brand. And it's like, for me, I had that, I had to rip myself out of there. Cause I'm like, the ROI isn't here. It looks good, but everyone's there for personal gain. And then the goal is for them to exchange referrals. But at the end of the day, like, are they doing it to hit the number? Or are they really qualifying referrals for me? <laughs> you know? And it's like, that was the balance I had. I don't know. You're smiling. Cause I think you kind of get where I'm going. So for me, it's like, man, we got to get a paid channel. Thumbtack isn't where it's at. You know that. Thumbtack ain't, ain't doing it. No, it ain't doing it. Because they'll get you. You can get a $60 lead, but what, what you don't get Thumbtack is- Thumbtack leads suck, man. Yeah. You, you get the $60 lead and then it's split between four other people and those-, those Well, that's not it. It's just, the, it's just the, it, the quantity isn't there. Yeah. I mean, you might get one to three a week and it's kind of confusing, isn't it? I mean, you're like, well, this person's in a uh, hundred miles away and they're still sending me to leave. That's right. giving me an opportunity. So here's my strategy for you. If I were to give you a strategy, number one, fire whoever that company is on good terms. Say, listen, I have to make a pivot, whatever. I'm sure you can figure that out. Second, get in touch with Austin at Base Code Marketing. Okay. He's a, he's a PCA guy. He's vetted. He gets my blessing. He works a lot with drip jobs people. Okay. Um, I have some Facebook recommendations for you. Personally, I think you should hire Austin for Google and you should take one of my recommendations for Facebook, which I'm going to send you privately. Last, most important here. Okay. You need to understand diversification. Thumbtack's cool, but Angie Leads is better if you're going to do it. Have you heard about Angie? I've so oddly I've lucked out on Thumbtack because, and I may be a, a rare exception because I'm the number one ranked pro in Georgia, you know, 125 five star reviews. Really on Thumbtack? That's yeah, pretty good. Thumbtack. So I I'm, wouldn't shut it off. Yeah. But, but I'm just saying you're probably going to get three to four times the amount of volume on Angie than you yeah. would Thumbtack. That's right. Well, right now I get 50 leads a month. And they're averaging between fifty to seventy-five dollars a lead. Are you it, converting those leads? That's the one issue with Thumbtack that I've found is because there's so many other providers. There's providers that just started three weeks ago and they're offering prices. There's so many of those yeah. that offer prices a quarter of what I charge, and the customers take it because I'm, you know, I'm not sending them my drip job stuff, you know, and so. I'm doing that on my own and it's hard to convey to the customer without ever even meeting them. Cause I don't, I do most of my, let me tell you when it comes to leads, there's one central focus. Okay. Have you ever heard of the term speed to lead? How yeah. important? No, you've never had that term. So speed to lead is just this mindset, right? It's like, first thing you got to understand is that the playing field is even when the customer submits the form right? They don't care who they're getting. They don't care if you have 150 reviews. They don't care if you have no reviews. Okay. Just follow me here. The playing feels even because they care about thumbtack. <laughs> they, they're, they're, they're going to thumbtack because they trust thumbtack. And yes, you happen to have some credibility with thumbtack, but so does the other guy who got their information because they're on thumbtack. Does that make sense? Correct. So the only way you really win that game consistently and over time is by being first by being the first one the fastest to contact the customer and get the, the next level of commitment because what I, this is what i found is that there's two components to winning leads it's speed and it's organization and drip jobs ac accomplishes both of those because we can integrate thumbtack with drip jobs so whenever you get a lead from thumbtack within seconds that customer gets a text message and an email with your company's name, branding, logo, story, next step. Right? right. So is thumb are y'all about to do thumbtack integration too? We have it. It's just through okay. Zapier. You have to do it through Zapier. Gotcha. And we also have it through Angie Leads. And the key here is that whenever that lead gets submitted to you, now you're a family guy. If you're out at Saturday doing something with your kids and a lead comes in through thumbtack, are you stopping what you're doing to call that lead? No. Right? But if it were Monday right now and you got a lead after this call, you'd probably call them, right? Correct. 
Customer doesn't care what day it is. It all matters based on what their motivations are and their emotions are high. You got to realize what people have to go through to submit their information to Thumbtack. Chances are it probably stemmed from a thought a couple days ago about what it would be like to get the house painted, right? Yep. Right? And then, oh man, I don't know. And they Google some companies and they're like, man, like, I don't know if I want to call these companies. Like, then they got to come to my house and then they see Thumbtack. Screened and approved pros. We do the hard work for you. You don't have to think. We'll do it, right? They go to Thumbtack. And then they've never been to Thumbtack, but it seems pretty cool because they go through this tiny little questionnaire. It's like, okay, well, what city are you in? I suggest you fill this out from the front side because it'll help you see like it's kind of confusing to them that they're actually going to be contacted by people. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So they put in your city, put in your state, put in your zip code. What type of project do you want done? And it's like this perfect psych, psych, psychologically designed questionnaire. And at the end, it's like, okay, we just submit your information to three or four pros. Message them now, right? Or, you know, whatever the next step is. Well, imagine after that, your company gets a text, your company sends them a text message and they get a ding while they're on the computer. Hey, it's Chris with Strategic Painting. We're here locally. Got your request on Thumbtack. Just wanted to say hello. Do you have any time Wednesday for an estimate? automated. It doesn't matter if it's Saturday, Sunday, or Christmas. We're capitalizing on their excitement. So to answer, to talk about what you said, you said sometimes they don't go with this because it's the cheaper price or they ignore us. I would argue that out of those 50 leads, 25 of them didn't even get the job done because they weren't persuaded to move forward with the next step. Some of them faded off. They went, they were high on emotion and then they just started thinking no one contacted them within a day, right? And then they just probably thought, man, I don't need to get this done. I can push this project off. And for sure, they just, they just ignore people, right? Yep. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. Yeah. I need AC done on a rental property and, you know, didn't get the answers I wanted. So I'm like, I'm just going to do this later. Dude, you, we're the same. I, me too. I had somebody, I wanted electric installed on my fence and no one called me back for three days, four yeah. days. And I'm like, and yeah. when they call back, you know what they're, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, I'm good. Exactly. Nah, I'm good. I'm already, I'm already at that pissed. point, I was like, man, it's, it's winter. It's a good time to update an AC that I know is going to be going out within the year or two. And that didn't happen. So, yeah. yeah. And you know what? It's money that if the guy answered the phone right away, right? When you called, got right back to you and made you feel important. Even if it was automated, even if it was like, hey, here's the next step of our process. You're like, fine, whatever. I'll play along. You That's know, it. help me get to, we can't make the mistake of thinking that we're important. <laughs> we're just a means to an end. Yeah. They want their house to look good. They don't care how it gets done. That's why they're hiring us. So just, these are some things to think about, but I would say, man, the best advice I can give you is you need to pick which side of the field you want to, you want to play because your focus is so important to get to a million that you're going to get there. Do you want to get there in a streamlined, efficient way? Or do you want to get there on a rocky, confused at confused when you get there of how to reverse engineer this to package this bundle up and hand it to somebody? That's right. Well, man, this has been awesome. And I, my, I'm exploding right now with stuff I'm going to go do. <laughs> good, man. Good. I know we're at our time, but hey, Chris, man, I'm glad this was helpful. I appreciate you, man. I'm going to send you an email after this, give you some, Great. some resources, um, to help, to help you out, man. And then what I'd like to do is maybe sit with you, uh, on, on drip jobs. We'll show you that branch feature and we'll get you up to date on some of the things we could do with that all pro, uh, handy pro pipeline. Let's do it. All right, my man. Talk soon. Right. Thanks. Take care. Yes, sir.